This is Scams and Cons News with Jim Grinstead. In this week's news, scammers break into a physician's prescription system, creating orders for tens of thousands of prescriptions of addictive drugs. And a lawsuit has been filed against Citigroup for not doing enough to protect consumers from scammers. But we start with British officials chasing a person they believe is the nation's most prolific romance scammer. It began when Sharon met David. The British TV show This Morning lays out what happened next. Um, He walked into my shop and said he was looking for a rice cooker. I was selling retro stuff, so I didn't have anything like that. Absolutely charming, handsome. And he just sweet-talked me for the next hour, but found out everything about me within the hour. If I owned my own place, if I had my own business, how many kids I had, if I had a big family. The first meeting, I met him on, on uh, Plenty of Fish and it didn't take more than a couple of days before we actually met. And again, he knew everything about me within the first drink. Her sister Lisa also fell in love with David. Can, can I ask, did, did you both fall for him? Did you both love him? You yeah, oh, definitely, absolutely. definitely. It just goes to show, you know, when you're in love, yeah. it's, it's things get blinded, don't they? And yeah. You, you, let a, you let a lot slip. When you're, when you're loved up, you do let a lot but, slip. But the problem with him was he was a complete controlling, yeah. dominating character. Yeah. So he threatened my son. He, what? Yeah, he um, also alienated me from my friends, you know, I, Are you home? No, I'm out. Well, if you're not back in five minutes, I'm leaving. That type of thing. Like all romance scams, once the scammer establishes dominance, they begin to ask for money. And they take it until the person either gets wise or runs out of money. This time, something different happened. A phone call from the police to say this guy's a wrong one. Yeah, they told me he was with uh, 17 women at the time. I was getting that phone call. It was like he died. It, honestly, I didn't feel sadness for the loss of the relationship because really, I think it had run its course anyway. So it was a cut-off point. Well, on the yeah. 29th of November, um, he was convicted of 19 counts of fraud and one of theft, and he was sentenced to 11 years in prison. Yes. I mean, how are you both feeling about that now? He's not going to do 11 no, years. He's, he's only going to do half, and then he'll be out and do it again. But everybody knows what he is now. Yeah. A 38-year-old man from Texas has been sentenced to three years in prison for his involvement in a romance scam that defrauded a Missouri woman of nearly $1.2 million. The man, a native of Nigeria, pleaded guilty to multiple counts of fraud, wire fraud, and conspiracy. His Texas accomplice posed as a veterinarian on a dating site to establish a relationship with the victim. He manipulated her into sending large sums of money under false pretenses. This is Scams and Cons News. 24 hours ago, I found out the person I'd been dating and seeing for the last six months as a con man. That is my sister, Emma. Andrew Tonks' lies had been so convincing, she'd invested $300,000 with him. However, the tables were about to turn on Andrew. What he didn't know was that Emma had discovered his real identity. But to get any chance of justice, Emma had to act like it was business as usual. Coming up in this series, and that's when murder, all this stuff goes through my mind. I'm really, really scared. I'm assuming Sarah has watched too much Netflix and figures I've been defrauding you. Couldn't be further from the truth. That's what this was, a real-life story that seems so unbelievable, but it was actually true. A true story that all starts with one simple swipe to the right. I'm Sarah Ferris. And I'm Emma Ferris. And this is my story, Conning the Con. An Australian man sent more than 17 million scam text messages from his home. The television show A Current Affair investigated and asked Michael, a former digital forensic specialist in the New South Wales Police Force, to explain the equipment that was found. So these are typically known as SIM boxes. So essentially they're just a bank of GSM modems or or cellular modems. 
each one with their own corresponding SIM card that can be used to send out bulk SMSs. Detectives allege these devices can hold over 250 active SIM cards and will typically send out 150,000 messages a day. In this case, they allege the scammer was posing as companies, including Australian Post and Linked. They're often connected to a computer, so the computer will craft the message and uh, any responses, if, if, uh, if they elicit responses, they'll come back through that computer as well. So the idea of it is that they're sending fake links that you click on? That's right. So that's, that's a common technique. They'll send out links from common Australian businesses such as Australia Post or banks. And the idea is to instill a sense of urgency in clicking the link or providing information. About one in 10 of those who received the text click the link. A Long Island man was cheated out of $8,000 in a Rolex watch sale by a scammer he met through Facebook Marketplace. The thief asked the seller to walk to his car so he could get the payment. The New York Post said that the thief locked himself in the car with the watch and attempted to drive away. The victim, Steve Morrow, jumped on the hood of the moving car in an attempt to stop him. Despite Morrow's efforts, the thief managed to escape with the watch. The incident was witnessed by a police officer. Morrow sustained minor injuries in the scuffle. A sophisticated drug ring, orchestrated by Devin Anthony Magararian of Kissimmee, Florida, hacked into a doctor's electronic prescribing accounts to generate tens of thousands of fraudulent prescriptions for addictive drugs. Those prescriptions were then picked up by runners and resold online. Magarian faces multiple criminal charges related to illegal drug sales and diversion of prescription medications. The scheme exploited vulnerabilities in the e-prescription system and mainly involved drugs like oxycodone. Magarian operated through an encrypted messaging service to coordinate with customers, living a lavish lifestyle from the proceeds. Law enforcement became aware of the operation after a local pharmacist raised suspicions about a fraudulent prescription. That led to McGarrion's arrest. This is Scams and Cons News. 3 a.m., the comedy horror podcast that holds weekly gatherings around the campfire. Let me tell you what you're going to get. You're going to hear stories about demonic possessions, prison stabbings, skinwalkers, glitches in the Matrix, cult leaders, missing 411, night marchers, Operation Paperclip, Mesopotamian devil worship, and so many monsters it'll give Kanye West a runaway for his money. Pop and meme culture also aren't off topic. A camp where laughs and scares are constantly competing for first place. We're just a group of friends trying to bust each other's balls, find the best stories, and expand the circle in the process. 3 a.m., the comedy horror podcast, not for the faint or fragile of heart. Let's go. New York Attorney General Letitia James has filed a federal lawsuit against Citigroup, Inc., alleging that the bank failed to protect customers and compensate victims of fraud adequately. The lawsuit claims that Citigroup's actions have led to millions of dollars in losses for New York customers. Citigroup asserts that it complies closely with wire transfer laws and works hard to prevent fraud instances, claiming that its measures have reduced wire fraud significantly. However, James Suits seeks reimbursement for lost funds, a civil penalty for violations of general business law, and other financial penalties. The complaint alleges Citigroup of lacking strong online protections against unauthorized account takeovers, misleading account holders about their rights after the fraud, and unlawfully denying reimbursement to fraud victims. The lawsuit highlights instances where customers lost significant sums, including retirement savings, due to fraudulent activities facilitated through the Citigroup system. Jose Medina Terran and Webster Batista Fernandez made headlines in Phoenix not for their flashy lifestyles driving Lamborghinis, but for running one of the largest YouTube music royalty scams in history. Billboard says the duo's scheme involves siphoning $23 million in royalties for Latin music copyrights they didn't control. Despite their elaborate operation, they were eventually caught and indicted on multiple charges. Batista accepted a plea deal, shedding light on how the scam operated. Meanwhile, suspicions arose about the role of AdRev, the rights management company involved. Victims and industry insiders are seeking restitution, 
and hoping for justice to serve as a deterrent to future scams. It might be fun to be a secret shopper, but it can also be a scam. WSOC in Charlotte, North Carolina, spoke with a woman who was looking to earn extra money and almost fell for an advertisement seeking secret shoppers. When I got the check in the mail, it had a letter with instructions. It told me I was hired. Congratulations. It had the date, the company name. It seemed legit. It had told me to go to different stores and to purchase eBay gift cards. The only thing that literally saved me was because I slept on it. Scams and Cons is a member of the Evergreen Podcast Network. Hi, this is Amy and Vanessa from She Goes by Jane, where we shine light on the stories of missing and unidentified women. On November 7th, we're sharing Nahida's story for the first time in a podcast. And this is a story that I thought I knew. But after reading police reports, it became more complicated than I thought. When investigators are called to Nahida Khatib's house, everything looks fine. Her purse is on the kitchen table, her cup of coffee is on the counter, and her two-year-old niece is in her playpen. The only thing amiss? Nahida is missing. Every week, we feature a poem written in honor of the person we're talking about. This week, we're joined by one of our favorite actresses. You might know her from Sister Act or King of the Hill or The Descendants. But if you're like us, you'll know her from Hocus Pocus. She's the much-beloved Kathy Najimy. Join us November 7th to hear Nahida's story. <laughs> 